Hi, I'm Chris Krauser. This is my brother Aaron Krauser with Your Kamloops. Air quality is a hot topic here in town, and today we're heading over to TRU. We're going to talk to Dr. Michael Maida, who's an environmental scientist and professor, about a new project that's measuring air quality in Kamloops all over the city. Purple Air is a technological platform for a, a low-cost, Wi-Fi-enabled air quality monitor that can be placed anywhere in the city. Uh, they are all over the world. We have them in the U.S., many parts of British Columbia now as well, and elsewhere on planet Earth. They're there to provide people uh, with the ability to see exactly in real time what their air quality is like and to uh, make determinations about how much risk uh, they might want to be exposed to and the kind of activities that they may wish to engage in. We have a, an example here of the purple air sensor. You, you can see that it's pretty small, about the size of a coffee, a coffee cup. And the device itself is uh, in a, an outdoor housing. It's composed of two laser particle counters, a small computer, mm -hmm. uh, a Wi-Fi chip, and it picks up the Wi-Fi signal from your router and it populates our website in real time very quickly. It uses a, a cloud to do that. Uh, the advantage of this technology is that it's very quick to install, it's low cost, it's accurate, it's been compared to EPA monitoring stations in the states, studied very systematically in peer-reviewed journal articles, and it is extremely reliable. So the first uh, sensor was placed here at TRU in uh, September of 2016. We currently have 12 of them in the city, with uh, an expansion of another 14 coming quite soon. Uh, this will give us the highest concentration of sensors probably anywhere in the world, and it will uh, really take advantage of the, the complex air sheds that we have here with different geography, different elevations, and different pollution sources. The sources in Kamloops that uh, affect air quality are variable, and they change by season, they change uh, obviously by industrial activity. In, in short, there are three primary sources of air pollution. Industrial, including some of our large actors like Domtar, uh, there's transportation sources from the, the highways and, and rail in particular, and there's residential sources from wood smoke produced by people burning wood in their chimneys and fireplaces. Well, the numbers that you see when you log into the Purple Air site are the actual uh, real-time air quality index numbers, and they change every 20 seconds. Uh, when people log into the site, they can click on any one of those numbers, and it will bring up a full diagnostic of what that sensor is showing, including a, a bar across the top that indicates where exactly the air quality is relative to various standards. When people look at the purple air sensor data online, they're going to see a, a few things. Uh, first of all, they're going to see an actual number in the air quality index range, the so-called AQI. The AQI starts at zero and it goes up to 500. Generally speaking, if you're over 100, uh, it is uh, something to be concerned about. And obviously, the higher the number, the, the, the greater the risk. We know that air pollution is one of the, the number one risk issues that people in, uh, around the world face. Uh, in, in British Columbia and Canada, air pollution itself kills more people than car accidents. In fact, nine times more people than car accidents every year. We know that the air sheds in Kamloops are actually uh, compromised and have been for, for quite a, a bit of time. Uh, the provincial monitors have indicated, especially when looking at things like annual averaging, that we're already above the province's targets for allowable air pollution. What the, air, the Purple Air Networks shows us in more detail is that some areas are much worse than others. So for example, uh, the downtown parts of, of Kamloops, because of the geography and because of the industrial sources of pollution, including potentially rail traffic, often have worse air pollution than, say, up in Aberdeen. And it's, it's knowing that that gives us a, a lot more tools to make decisions then about where to place new projects, where to focus our efforts and energy to reduce the problem. We're learning a lot from the Purple Air Network. Uh, very specifically, what we're learning is that air quality uh, in a place like Kamloops isn't uniform. The, the old approach, the approach that, say, the Minister of Environment uses, is to have one or two air quality stations in a big city like this, and then to make generalizations about how the entire city is faring. What Purple Air shows us is that air quality is highly variable by location. It can change extremely quickly based upon local sources of pollution, and uh, it's uh, not reasonable as a result to then make generalizations and to use, you know, even things like long-term averaging to explain what our error is actually like. 
I hope that uh, from this project, people in Kamloops will learn uh, that um, it's also their responsibility to, to push for better quality air standards. For far too long, people here and elsewhere have assumed that government will look after them and that industry will do the same. Uh, that's not usually the case. Uh, and uh, citizen science initiatives like this, where people can purchase their own sensor through our project and then set it up and participate, are really giving people uh, a sense of empowerment so that they can see what's happening and they can actually lobby for change. Thank you very much, Dr. Mita. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. We're helping people move to Kamloops and in and around Kamloops, their families, etc. We need to know as much as we can. Definitely. If you'd like to get any more information on this, please go to kamloops.purpleair.org and check it out. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.